Hey guys, can I ask the photographers to turn their flashes off? The manager's here to take your question ahead of tomorrow evening's semi-final against Celta Vigo. If you'd like to put your hand up, we do have a microphone. And also, please bear with us because we do have an interpreter. Jose, good afternoon. When people look back on your first season in charge at Manchester United, how big will tomorrow night's game be, perhaps, to unlock a second trophy? Bueno, cuando uh, miras, uh, después, una vez que finalice la temporada y miras atrás, um, ¿cuál sería la importancia de, de, de haber o oh, la posibilidad de obtener un segundo trofeo? A third. Um, but uh, I'm not speaking about or thinking about myself. I'm thinking about the club and I'm thinking about the players. Uh, for the club, uh, it would be very important. It would be very important uh, to be again in a in the European final. For the club, it would be very important to fight um, for the only trophy that uh, the club never, never won it before. And for this group of players, we have just a little group with um, European success. I think Rooney, Carrick, Young, this, this group of, uh, of the English boys with long time in the club, plus Mata. And a part of them, if, if I'm not wrong, no one, no one did it before. So it would be very important for the club, it would be very important for the players. And we are going to do tomorrow what we are doing since the beginning of the season, which is to fight hard. Fight hard. Long journey. Tomorrow, match number 14 in the Europa League. And we are going to fight hard. You've, you've talked this season about two doors being open to the Champions League, but in recent weeks you've effectively closed one door in terms of the Premier League. How much of a gamble is that? How much of a high risk strategy is that to gamble everything on this competition? And how confident are you that the players can deliver on that gamble that you've taken? Recién habéis hablado durante esta esta parte de la temporada de, de dos puertas a, a la Champions para el año que viene, pero ahora parece que va, va cerrando casi una de estas puertas y solo queda abierta una puerta que sería ganar uh, la Europa League. Esto representa ¿Hasta qué punto esto representa una apuesta en cuanto a la clasificación para la Champions el año que viene? No, the, the situation is, uh, is simple. Um, 17 matches in seven weeks with 16 players is impossible. It was not a gamble. It was, um, it was a simple decision. It's a, a decision based on, on common sense. 17 matches in seven weeks, April and, and, and May. 17 matches with 16 players is, uh, is completely impossible. So since the moment we, we lost players and we lost initially four of them in one week, when we lost uh, Smalling and Jones, in the national team, and we lost Rojo and Zlatan against Anderlecht in that moment. And after that, we lost boys that could be good alternatives. Ashley Young, Luke Shaw, Timo Fazumensa. So when we lost these players in um, a period of 17 matches, 
in seven weeks was the impossible job. So it was not a gamble, it was just a consequence of a, a consequence of our situation. So we are in this situation now and we have to fight for it. So let's see if if tomorrow we can we can do it and if we can go to the if we can go to the final. But uh, doesn't matter what, no regrets. We we are giving everything we can. The players, myself, everyone that works around, we are giving everything. So when you give everything, no problem. Do you think that this, do you, as a manager yourself, would you consider that this is the most important game of the season? And again, from the point of view as a manager, in terms of how motivated will Celta be, uh, would you consider that they probably consider it's the most important uh, game of their uh, history, almost? I think in terms of motivation, we are uh, we are even. Uh, for Celta, for Celta is, uh, in their words, the most important match of. Uh, of their history, and in my feelings, is also the most important match of our history. Doesn't matter what happened before. Doesn't matter how big a matches we played before. What matters is the next one, and the next one is tomorrow. So I don't, I don't believe that Celta dreams more than us. That Celta wants more than us. I really don't, don't believe. So in this aspect. I don't think there will be a, a difference between between both teams. Um, Jose, do the, um, the headlines and the story about Paul's transfer, does that affect you or does that affect the player at all? We're not here no. to discuss that, we're just here to talk about the game. No, but the, the, the question is simple. Okay. If he asks if it affects, no. does it affect? que los titulares sobre el traspaso de, de Pogba afecta en, en cualquier manera la preparación? No. I, just one other thing you said last week about Old Trafford. If Old Trafford wants us to win, we'll win. Had you sensed the atmosphere maybe dipping in the last few weeks and was that a bit of an appeal see, to the crowd? I, I see a difference between matches. I don't think he's, uh, I don't think he's consistent. The atmosphere, I don't think he's consistent the enthusiasm I, I could feel for example the match against Chelsea the match uh, where um, they wanted to play uh, they played since since the first minute they played until the last minute was was really a, a very strong old treffer we had other matches for example the match against Anderlecht where um, the stadium was not warm enough to to make us feel that was a very important match for us, and it was because it was was the second leg quarter final. So hopefully tomorrow they have this this feeling that is a second leg semi final and more important than the second leg semi final. Only the final, so we have we have to fight to fight hard tomorrow. The opposition manager has uh, been talking uh, previously about how he might set up differently, change his tactics slightly and try and get uh, Iago Aspas uh, featuring in a position where he might actually be involved in the game more because he wasn't involved too much in the, the second leg. Um, I, w will that be coming into your thinking? How are you thinking about setting up and how are you approaching the game? A lo mejor tú sabes más que yo del Celta. Yo lo que sé es lo que veo, o lo que he visto. Lo que he visto en sus partidos durante la temporada, lo que he visto en, en el partido contra nosotros. He visto Aspas jugar sobre la derecha, he visto Aspas jugar como nueve, he visto Aspas jugar detrás de Guidetti, a no ser que Aspas juegue de centrocampista central, o de lateral izquierdo, nada va a ser una, una, una sorpresa. Uh, son partidos tan importantes que nos metemos en ellos con todo lo que tenemos. Uh, y miras un partido y dos y tres y cuatro y, y buscas toda la información posible que te pueda, que te pueda 
ayudar. Pero para mí más importante que la posición de Aspas o la posición de cualquier otro jugador o, o mismo el sistema táctico, el dibujo táctico que puedan tener, son los principios de juego. El modo como, como normalmente juegan o intentan jugar y, y esto no cambia mucho independiente de, de la posición de cada, de cada jugador. Um, it seems like it seems like you know more about Celta maybe than I do, but uh, from what I've seen, and I looked at six games before our match against them, which obviously I saw that as well, and I've seen Aspas play uh, as a nine, I've seen him play on the right-hand side, I've played, seen him playing just behind Guidetti. So unless he ends up playing centre-mid or he ends up playing at left-back, I don't think there's anything that can surprise us or anything that we won't be aware of about Aspas. <laughs> Um, obviously, when we're preparing for a game, uh, we, we put as much uh, as we possibly can. We put everything into that preparation and, and studying the opposition, and we study every type of information that can help us in the aim of, of winning the game. But at the end of the day, it's all about systems and tactical systems and, and principles of play. Um, you know, it's a game of football at the, at the, at the end of the day, uh, no matter how, you know, what little tactical nuances that might, might appear on the night. Okay, last two questions, one here and one at the back. <coughs> Hi, Jose. With regard to what you want to build um, in Manchester United next season, how, how vital, how important is it to qualify for the Champions League? And pensando en lo que quiere construir el año que viene um, de cara a la Champions League, ¿qué es la importancia asegurar la clasificación para la Champions, ganar mañana y, y ganar la final? If you don't qualify for Champions League, it's because you are not good enough to play Champions League. I, I, I try to, to look at it in a pragmatic way. Obviously, for the prestige of, of the club, Champions League is Champions League. Obviously, financially, Champions League is Champions League. Obviously, for players, for myself, um, Champions League is Champions League. But if you are not there, it's because you are not good enough to be there. So if uh, tomorrow we don't go to the to the final and we stay in the semi-finals and next season we play again Europa League, it's because we are not good enough. So maybe is the is is the step we need to be to improve. If we win tomorrow, if we are strong enough to win tomorrow, if we are strong enough to go to the final and win and to qualify for Champions League. Then obviously is the competition that uh, you want to be, but um, I think in in this moment we have just to focus on on where we are, and um, nobody has more motivation than I have to to try to win tomorrow. Okay, last question. Jose, over here on your left. I know that you say that it is evenly poised, but. How concerned are you about that element of complacency, and what do you do as a coach to guard against complacency? Sé que has declarado que el partido todavía queda muy uh, igualado, uh, mucho equilibrio en la eliminatoria, pero teniendo el liderato ganando 1-0 después del partido ida, ¿cómo puedes asegurar que los jugadores no entran en el juego demasiado relajado, pensando que ya está casi ganado la eliminatoria? Working hard, which was what we did, uh, which was what we did since um, since last Monday. Respecting the opponent, making the players feel that we respect the opponent. Uh, preparing the players for all the scenarios, like I was telling to the Spanish colleague. Try to go through every possible detail. And that shows the player, shows the players that uh, no, is serious, is serious stuff. In the top of that, you know, it's different to play for top four than to play to win uh, an European competition. You know, even to myself, honestly. The difference between finish fourth or fifth or sixth, the difference is just 
qualify for Champions League. But no trophy, no, no title, no honor, no prestige, nothing at all. Another thing is, is to play for a cup, to play for a competition, to play for a title. That in the top of it, in the top of it, gives a bonus of playing a, a Champions League. But in this moment, we don't think about Champions League. We think about a, a title. We think about uh, the possibility to play European Super Cup in August against uh, a big club. Um, so we think about all these things, and these things they give no space to complacency. I think. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Cheers. Just so I'm not sure to speak. <laughs> oh, cheers. You're all right. Good morning. Thanks a lot. That's great. That's perfect. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. We have Wayne Rooney here um, pre to preview the Europa League semi final second leg tomorrow. We're here to take questions on the game. So if you'd like to start, put your hand up and I'll point to you. Okay, James. Hi, Wayne. Um, you've broken every record that you went out to, to break. You've won every trophy that you can win with a team except for Europa League. What would it mean to complete the set for you? Um, well, I didn't win the Super Cup. We lost the Super Cup, so obviously that was disappointing. But I think t tomorrow was a massive chance for us to get to the to the final. I think it's a competition which has been long, hard competition this season. We deserve to be here and it's an opportunity for us to win a trophy, so it's um, a big chance for us tomorrow night. Why is it? <coughs> Wayne, you've played and won the Champions League. How important is it for this club to be back, back in after a two-year absence next season, which is a byproduct of winning the Europa League, obviously? Yeah, it's important for us to, to be back in the Champions League, of course. It's something we all want and um, I think this club belongs there and um, I think it's realistically it's going to be difficult to do it through the league so it's a this is the chance for us to do it but also to win a trophy so I think first of all we have to concentrate on trying to win the trophy and and take what comes with it and of, of course that's qualifying for the Champions League. When you've been involved in Champions League semi-finals before does this one feel any different because it's Europa League or is the excitement still the same? I think it's the semi-final. I think, of course, Champions League semi-final is is um, is is games which you know you know you're in touching distance of going to a Champions League final. But this is um, a semi-final, European semi-final, and um, you know it's it's the biggest competition we've realistically had of winning over the last you know two or three years. So it's um, it's a competition we're taking really serious. We want to win it. Um, we're in a good position, not, you know, it's not over, it's still a dangerous position we're in, but we're in a good position in the tie, so we feel uh, um, we've got a good chance of going through to the final if we if we play play to our best tomorrow. Wayne, we've got used to excuse me, watching you lead the team out every week over the last couple of years. How, how hard has it been for you sitting on the sidelines sometimes this year watching, watching the team play? Um, of course you want to play, you want to play every game and um, sometimes that's football and I've had to keep working and trying to take my chance when, when I get the opportunity so um, that's what I've done and um, when called upon then I'll try, try my best to help the team. Okay. Hi Wayne, deep down do you, do you think this will be your, your final chance to reach another big final with Manchester United or do you still think there is some hope that you may be here for another season? Um, my focus is on trying to help us win this final and um, that's my sole focus. Um, I think, um, you know, it's a massive opportunity for us as a group of players to, to win a European title and um, my focus is to help us try and win this one. Would you like to stay? Would I like to stay? I've been at this club 13 years, um, of course.
I want to play football. Yeah. Okay, pause. That's all right. I was going to ask the same question, so I'll rephrase it slightly. What, what, on a personal level, what challenges does it uh, present to you being effectively a squad player now rather than a, a, a sort of first team or a regular starter? And, and how difficult or how easy has it been to adjust to, to, to that mentality and that mindset? No, I think football football changes um you know and you have different periods different challenges in your career and um this season of course i haven't played as much as i'd like to play um i would like to play more but that's the way it, it, it's panned out and um you know i've i've tried to help the team um off the pitch on the pitch and um tried to help us win you know i haven't from me too, he's had the prime. I haven't, you know, made a a big fuss of it. Um, but of course, I'm a football player. I want to play football, and um, you know, the more I can play, obviously, the better for me, and um, the more I feel I can help the team. Okay, last two questions for Stuart and Simon. Wayne, you, you've seen um, Manchester United have to rebuild over the years, um, not possibly quite as much as it. Do you think this is the biggest rebuild that the side is going through? And and do you think the manager is going in the right direction with that? Um, I think I said it in October, November. I think um, this club will be successful under Jose Mourinho. I think I haven't seen the way he works. Um, you know, and how successful he's been in, in other countries, it will be successful. And if we can win um, the Europa League, then, you know, that'll be three th trophies already in this first season. And it's not far away. I think we're not far away from, you know, being up there challenging again for the Premier League and and um, hopefully next season in the Champions League as well. So, um, but I'm convinced the club will be successful under, in, under Jose. When it started for you at Manchester United with the European game and that famous hat trick, when you look back over all the European games that you played, which games stick out for you, in particular ones that you played here? Um, to be honest, all of them. I think the the big nights, uh, the European nights here um, under the lights, and um, obviously we had the the big win against Roma, um, the three two against AC Milan semi final. Um, my debut obviously was an important game for me, um, but I think the the European nights are, are different. They're different to the Premier League games, and you can you know you can sense the excitement around the stadium before the games, and um, obviously the good games to play.